That's what it's all about. Not that. Hello, welcome to Cycling Tips. Welcome to Banyas de Bigo in the French Pyrenees, a town that has seen many stage finishes of the Tour de France, the most recent being the 2019 edition a stage which was famed for a certain Australian, Rowan Dennis, pulling the pin just one day before the pole time trial which he was expected to win. Now I'm not here this week to show you nondescript stretches of tarmac that have been used for the Tour de France. No, I'm here for a double whammy video. <laughs> So if this video isn't about concrete finish lines in the middle of towns, what is it about? Well, the other day I had a tweet that got me thinking. Let me just find it. Shoddy's voice is irritating. This guy actually speaks English. I can understand why it's called Shoddy. Arabia, Chris Stocks. Basically, he says, Tom Ritchie. Yes, the legend. Says that all bikes are gravel bikes. Now I've got a Ritchie logic here, a disc version. And I thought, well, how about we push it, see how far we can go and answer the question, are all bikes gravel bikes? And while we're at it, I thought the ideal way of doing this is by going beyond the finish line, going on the roads the professionals don't take at the Tour de France because, hey, that could be a good series as well, couldn't it? Now, why have I chosen a cold outer span over the tourmalade? Well, there's several reasons. For starters, the tourmalade is just savage, isn't it? How fit do you think I am? Secondly, the aspan still has that law of a Tour de France climb. It's usually the final shakedown before the big climb or the drop into town. Next up, I have been up and down this climb several times when I've been visiting family here. And there does seem to be plenty of little roads off to the side of the main road that need investigating. Unlike the Tourmalet, this is a little bit more sedate. The Tourmalet is pretty steep. And them side roads, from the research I've done, do seem to require a mountain bike. All right, so we've managed the road section just, and now it's time for a bit of gravel. Now, once you're at the top of the Aspen, there's a car park. On your, well, depends what side you come up. The opposite side to the cows. And there's a few gravel tracks. One which seems pretty flat so far. So let's check it out. Admittedly, this is nothing too extreme, but it's certainly taking me off the beaten track, away from the crowds, and show me somewhere where I wouldn't have otherwise been. Oh, while I've got your attention, how about going to check out Velo Club Cycling Tips membership program? We've got an awesome offer going on at the moment. A Velo Club membership for a year and a Strava membership for a year, all for 99 US dollars. So you can go out, do some awesome gravel rides, get a couple of KOMs, jump over to the Velo Club Slack channel and boast about it, or just let us know where all the good roads are. Right, back to the video. Let's delve in to the differences between a road and a gravel bike, because there is a few. Now, I am on a Ritchie Logic disc, as I've said, this bike accepts 30 mil tyres, although I reckon you could get up, up to 32 at a push. There is enough clearance there. And most gravel bikes, or the gravel bikes today, will take up to pretty much a 48, depending on the model. They will also accept two different wheel sizes, or at least a lot of them will. 700C and 650B. The geometry on a gravel bike also accommodates for being off-road a little bit more. The bottom bracket will be a bit higher. The chain stays will probably be a little bit longer or quite a bit longer on some of them. 
and we are seeing a longer top tube with a short stem on a lot of the bikes now all in order a little bit more adaptable shall we say as for road bikes well you've got a few different versions you've got your pure race bread machines your performance bikes the stuff that you would see at the tour de france generally speaking most of these will only sort of accommodate up to the max 30 millimeters tires the bottom brackets lower everything's that little bit more nippy there is also your all-road endurance sort of bikes that do now accommodate for tires up to sort of even a 35 i'd say the richie logic that i'm on falls into that camp okay i think steep i think i might have bit off more than i can chew here it looks a little bit like um a mountain bike trail rather than a gravel trail for the beyond the finish line part of this video and if it's going to be a bit of a series i think i'm not going to just stick to the gravel roads that go beyond the mountain top finishes of the grand tours no because as i've found out there is plenty of good little roads that the tour doesn't use that link mountains such as this one that goes from about halfway up the aspen to about the quarter way up the tourmalay a lot of these roads aren't used because they're far too narrow for the tour caravan and the uh, publicity vehicles that are shaped like washing machines blocks of cheese and they're not often the smoothest well, that could be another reason why the tour doesn't come up these roads. Can I just get round you, please? Pardon. Oh, he's protecting the little one. Ladies, thank you. Gents. Enjoy. I have to admit, I am so glad I ventured off the main road today. There is some superb little back roads around here. Just little loops that take you on and off the main road. Away from the traffic. Away from the people trying to get KOMs. It's just pleasant. Quiet. Bloody lovely. Mopeds in France. Alright people, let's round this video up. First off, let's address the beyond the finish line piece of this video. Personally, I think we're on to a winner here. It could be a very good series, and not just because it gives me an excuse to get out on my bike more, explore more places, but I honestly do think there's plenty of good roads out there that we don't know about that do go beyond the finish lines of the many Grand Tour mountain top finishes. And I reckon if I get a proper gravel bike, load it up with some camping gear, we could make a proper adventure of it. So stay tuned for that. Next up is Tom Ritchie Wright. Are all bikes gravel bikes? Well, I don't think we can disagree with Tom on anything. The man's a legend. But what I actually think that phrase is about is just getting out and exploring, not letting the bike that you've got limit you to what the marketing says it's capable of. Especially now, we're not living in the 80s or the 90s when 19, 21 mil tires and the equipment on the bikes basically did limit you. Now we've got 32 mil tires, 30 or 28 mil tires on pretty much any road bike. Tubeless ready wheels, which allow you to explore roads that maybe have been out of bounds before. Sure, you're not gonna be able to take on the more extreme side of gravel, but if I'm honest, I think a lot of gravel bikes now are sort of venturing towards cross-country mountain bikes. Just have a look at Specialized New Diverge Evo. It's got flat bars. What do you think though? Am I right, am I wrong? Is Tom right, is Tom wrong? Of course he's right. Let us know in the comments below. Also, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and until next time, thank you for watching, and enjoy your riding.